Is Kelly Cochran the bisexual black widow? She sensationally claims her husband Jason died from a heroin overdose. But is she telling the truth? When you heard that Jason was dead, what did you think? I just couldn't believe it. I knew that Kelly killed him. Why do you think Kelly killed her husband? I think that she killed her husband because he was probably a liability for her. She was concerned that he was going to end up talking about things and she was going to get in trouble. Things like the unsolved disappearance of her lover, Chris Regan, in Iron River, Michigan. Now the suspicious death of Kelly's husband gives Chief Frizzo a fresh opportunity to get Kelly to talk about Chris. The chief asks Hobart, Indiana police detective Jeremy Ogden to speak to her. Right from the get-go, there was some kind of very strange um, like attraction or connection that she had to him, or whatever it was, but she singled him out. That attraction seemed to surface in this cat and mouse game of texts between Kelly and Detective Ogden. Ever been to the West Coast? I was driving last night. Very interesting. Game on. No more play. Your move, Detective. See you soon. He was able to lead her to believe that he was sympathetic towards her and he believed her and he won her over. But Ogden hasn't been able to nab her yet. Kelly had fled to Kentucky. U.S. Marshals picked her up, and while in the local jail, she fashioned these shanks out of eyeglasses. Well, who do you think she was going to kill? Well, she made comment that she was going to stab the female corrections officer, but changed her mind. You have the right to remain silent. In the interrogation room, Kelly says, let's make a deal. I'll talk for a price immunity from prosecution. I am here to cooperate. However, I will not cooperate if there's any charges brought to me. I see how easy it is for you to get a search warrant. I see how it is for you pretty much to go through anything of people's stuff. Um, I think you can arrange something like that for me. No way would cops ever cut a deal like that. So Kelly shuts her mouth. Now, Chief Frizzo uses her new tool to pry it wide open. She was so attached to him is because he actually was able to do to her what she does to everyone else. And that is, you know, kind of trick her and manipulate her. So Ogden sets an almost unbelievable trap. He asks a friend of Jason's to make up a story that will freak Kelly out. His idea was, you know, I want you to make this phone call to Kelly, and I want you to tell her that you received in the mail this letter from Jason. And in this letter, there's a note that says, if something should happen to me, please mail this letter to the Iron River Police Department. She fell for it, and her initial responses were huge. She broke down and started crying and saying, please don't mail it. So the setup worked. It did. And that, and that enabled him, Detective Ogden, to move into the hundreds of hours of interviews he did with her. Now Kelly is back for a second round. I've got two men dying there and two. I know that. Emotional, holding hands with the detective, Kelly finally comes clean about what happened to Jason. What did Kelly say? Um, that she had shot him up with a large dose of heroin to kind of subdue him a little bit. And she just put her, her hands over his uh, nose and mouth and suffocated him. Then comes the moment Chief Frizzo has been waiting nearly two years to hear. You watched him die, right? Look at me. Where did he shoot him in his body? In his head. Kelly describes how she lured Chris to her house. She and Jason ambushed Chris while he was naked. I know that you two had sex upstairs before he got shot. And then somehow you end up back on the main level, right? OK, so you go back downstairs. Is Chris dressed? Are you dressed? And then Jason appears. And what happens then? What does he say to him? Kelly says, as she and Chris were still in a sexual embrace at the top of the stairs, 
Jason was lying in wait. His 22 rifle aims straight at Chris's head. The bullet tears through his skull. You fell down the stairs with him? Death came in an instant, and it happened almost as the psychic said it did. He got hit with something in the back of the head. I felt that he had tried to get out the door, or he had fallen out the door, something like that. Kelly then reveals the horrible way they disposed of Chris's body. Tell me, what happened? What? Downsized it. How did he downsize it? Do you need to know all that? I do. I need to know it all. How did he cut him into pieces? A chisel. A what? A chisel. Like a big chisel. You know what I mean? A big chisel. Big wood chisel? Well, that doesn't make any sense, though. Kelly shifts her story and says Jason used an electric handsaw to chop him into pieces. So he completely dismembered Chris in the basement? Did you watch him? You got sick? You threw up? Kelly says they cut Chris up on plastic wrapping. They burned the plastic and the saw blade in a burn barrel and dumped the barrel in the mine pit. Then Jason drove Chris's car to the park and ride, and they scattered his mutilated body in the woods. And how did he take him there? With what? What did he do? Did he put him in the truck? Where? Like, uh... The confession complete, okay, smoke. Kelly asked to smoke a last cigarette before she's taken to a cell. And while Detective Ogden is out of the room, she bizarrely falls out of her chair. Is she high or just tired? Cops aren't sure. Later, the admitted killer is put into handcuffs facing two counts of murder in two different states. I gotta tell you, I do not like being in this basement. Retired Michigan State Police Detective Michael Niger took me into Kelly's dungeon of death. This is where they took his body apart with a saw and then put him in garbage bags. The fact that you never found his blood in here, what do you think that plastic has to do with any of that? Well, the plastic is a you know impervi impervious barrier, and uh, that would prevent they would they would use that to you know prevent any surface in the basement from getting blood on it. No one still knows where the remains of Chris Regan are, but one person does, Kelly Cochran. Next, Kelly takes cops on a field trip to show where they dumped the body parts. I finally found you, you know. Plus, the question investigators all across the country want answered. Do you believe that Kelly is a serial killer? When they got married, they made this pact that if one of them um, were to have an affair, that they had to kill the person that they had the affair with. 